What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out when intergender wrestling goes wrong, the Asuka incident. I'm guessing there's an equal rights, equal fights situation going on with Asuka and whoever else. And uh, I'm guessing it goes wrong, man. So, we're gonna check this out. Shout out to uh, people that um, were sending this to me in the in the clutch Discord. Uh, definitely wanted to check this out. Uh, I believe this is by Age of Wrestling. So, we're gonna see what this whole situation is talking about uh should be uh, quite an interesting one appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one man morning this episode contains content that may be disturbing to some viewers viewer discretion is advised For oscar sure. is one of the greatest women's wrestlers in the world today she has separated herself from other women in wrestling through her incredible in-ring skill charismatic aura protracted longevity, impressive versatility, and her strong connection with the fans. With all of these Very aspects, true. she's managed to become a multi-time women's world champion in WWE with many remarkable reigns. However, Asuka wasn't always Asuka, and things haven't always been rosy, especially when she was in Japan wrestling under the ring name Kana. Mm -hmm. An incident occurred in Japan in 2014 oh. when Asuka had a match against the most notorious man in Japanese wrestling, the murder grandpa himself, Minoru Suzuki. Yeah, nah, bro. Oh, man. I, I didn't know this was her opponent. I think I may have seen this clip. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, out of all the intergender matches she can have, out of all the equal rights, equal fight matches she can have th with this guy, oh, man. In this match, he absolutely decimated Asuka Jeez. and across the line as far as intergender wrestling goes, as it was more akin to an actual domestic assault. But why did Suzuki Yeah, I did. I have seen this clip. I have seen this clip. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. This is just... This is brutal. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, I don't know about this one, bro. It looked like she was defenseless. Suzuki go so hard on Asuka, Jeez. how did it all come to this point? Asuka was born in Osaka, Japan in 1981, and growing up she was a massive fan of professional wrestling, but weirdly enough, she wasn't a fan of Joshi wrestling at all, which is Japanese women's wrestling, even mm. though it has such a rich history. Instead, she was interested in men's wrestling, as her heroes were wrestling legends like the great Muto, Antonio Inoki, and someone who she would infamously make headlines with in the future, none other than Minoru Suzuki. Even though she had a great love for wrestling, she instead went into a different field as a career. She worked as a graphic designer and a journalist in the gaming mm. industry, as oh, video wow. games were another one of her passions. Her current YouTube channel is a testament to this. Oh man, I know some of you uh, guys out there are, y'all already love Asuka just off the looks and her in-ring skills, but knowing that she, you know, is uh, a big fan of video games, oh. I already know some of y'all are just losing yourselves right now at the thought of that. <laughs> Even though she loved the video game industry and achieved a lot, she had a calling for her first true love, which was professional wrestling. And so she quit her job and started to train to become a professional wrestler that's, in 2003. That's crazy. She made her debut in 2004 under the ring name Kana in the all-female promotion Major Girls Fighting Atars, previously known as the promotion Arison. She wrestled for less than two years in this promotion because she was forced to retire in 2006 as she was diagnosed with chronic nephritis, a condition that caused inflammation of the kidneys and that can be caused and exacerbated by exactly the type of strenuous exercise oh, that comes damn. with the job of being a wrestler. When she left wrestling, she opened up her own graphic design agency, but her professional wrestling itch was just too strong and she wow. returned back to the ring in 2007, a year and a half after retiring. When she returned, she really started to build her name and fame in wrestling. While American wrestling had long been dominated by a single company, WWE, the Japanese wrestling scene is far more splintered, especially where Joshi is concerned. The biggest promotion in Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling, did not feature women's wrestling at all, leaving a void to be filled by a ton of smaller companies. After Asuka came back to wrestling, she wrestled for pretty much all of these Joshi wrestling promotions. She arguably found her greatest fame in the promotion, Pro Wrestling Wave, where she was one of the company's top stars. It was in this promotion that she formed the stable, Triple Tails, with Io Shirai, now known as Io Sky. Wow, Dabu, I didn't know that. multi-time women's world champion. Did not know that. That's very interesting. Wow. 
I definitely did not know that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Both very talented in the ring. In there. The stable was also with Io's sister, Mio Shirai. This trio would go on to dominate the Joshi wrestling scene, but they disbanded after about a year. Everything changed for Asuka in 2010 though when she published her manifesto in the magazine Weekly Pro Wrestling. And no, not the type of manifesto of one of those mass shooters who murder loads of people, but yeah. a professional wrestling manifesto. Through this manifesto, she explained how not. she was largely disillusioned and disgusted with the Joshi wrestling scene, which she found overly stylized and more focused on how the woman looked oh. rather than the product itself. She also trashed her fellow Joshi pro wrestlers, not only for their personalities, but also for their wrestling. Asuka basically went full savage mode on the Damn. Joshi wrestling scene. So here you got a hotshot Joshi and Asuka, who had only a- <laughs> She pulled a, <laughs> a CM Punk. <laughs> Working with children. <laughs> That's basically what she did. She pulled a CM Punk. I'm working with children. <laughs> a few years experience wrestling. Oh, that's crazy. Notion to improve the Joshi wrestling industry. Even though there was nothing inherently wrong with what she said, she was in most folks' eyes a rookie overstepping her bounds by mm. burying the Joshi industry by pointing out its very blatant flaws. This is a no-go in a Japanese society that values conformity, age, and seniority. This uh, manifesto managed to not only get her on the bad side of her peers, but promoters too. She was crucified in the media for this and was also accused of being too stiff and dangerous in the ring. Jesus! Funnily enough, this manifesto shot Asuka right to the top of the industry because everyone essentially hated her and wanted to see her get a comeuppance. All of this caused her to begin producing her own shows around this time under the banner Kana Pro. The fact that she was able to pull big crowds in Japan based off of her name and the other wrestlers mm. she invited to wrestle on her cards just showed how talented and how popular she actually was in the Joshi wrestling scene. That's, that is crazy. She's able to put on her own shows. <laughs> wow. After pretty much burying anybody else that she felt like was not up to her standards and burying that particular side of the industry, she still was able to put on some shows and, and have people pull up that's crazy man scene she was still hated by her peers and promoters though so much so that she even claimed that stardom is an organization that was created to defeat me stardom was wow. co-founded in 2011 by one of oscar's biggest enemies nane takahashi with whom she had real life beef with and even allegedly gone into a backstage fist fight with years prior Whoa. even though stardom at that time was not as big as it is in this day and age Asuka was essentially blacklisted from the company and not allowed to wrestle there. But that didn't matter though as she was still getting booked across Japan because she could draw very well. Mm. She was also getting booked in the United States for promotions like Shima and Chikara with some of her most notable opponents on the American independence being Sarah Del Rey, Mia Yim, Nikki Cross and Athena. What also helped her in her mm. popularity was the gravures that she released. These are basically very racy modeling videos featuring Oh, oh man, I know y'all gonna have a field day in the comment section. Oh my God, I already know. <laughs> Is that Mommy Asuka? Oh my God. <laughs> oh man, oh. <laughs> I already know what's coming featuring her in a bikini in various compromising positions, doing various things that shall not be delved into on this video. Oh! It's definitely too hot for YouTube. Oh, she was getting down! Oh man, I already know, boys. is Googling and searching, and now I see why y'all were sending me this video. It wasn't because she was getting the beats. <laughs> it was because of this part of the video y'all wanted me to see. Y'all think y'all slick. <laughs> <laughs> also helped her with her popularity with the two new gimmicks that she created and debuted in 2013, Kana Zombie and Kana Clown. She used to wear nightmarish Whoa. makeup, making her look almost demonic. There was a menacing dark aura around her and she was not only scary to look at, but behave in a similarly disturbing fashion. The Poison Mist was also a prominent uh -huh. feature for her arsenal. Her current gimmick now in WWE is a callback to this version of uh -huh. her. This portrayal of her character was a super smash mega hit and caused her popularity to grow even more. And just like that, she had won over Joshi Wrestling as an industry. They preyed on Asuka's downfall, but all she did was rise to the top. She had so much influence and was such a big draw that it was hard for anyone to criticize her.
She could be a lovable baby face who was funny and relatable, or a terrifying heel that made you uncomfortable with fear or hate. And that's kind of what they've had her do. Um, obviously, with this reincarnation of her kind of gimmick, uh, you know, but, you know, toned down for WWE purposes. But when she's a baby face, you don't know exactly what she's really saying. But all you know is no one is ready for Asuka and people love it. She'd be out there dancing and having a good time. But, you know, she can beat the crap out of you. So WWE has definitely explored those sides of her. But now they're into more of the, the kind of side of things. So it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, if they continue that uh, character traje uh, trajectory for her. That is what made us so special. Her creativity and charisma shot her to the top as she was the type of wrestler who was willing to be bold and take risks. She wasn't in it for the money or to be champion. She was wrestling because she loved it, and fans could tell, so they gravitated towards her. She was also very into intergender matches as she wrestled various men before. This led her to a self-produced show, Kana Pro Mania Reach in 2014, where she booked herself in a match, teaming with pro wrestling Noah Mainstay, Noah Michi Marafuji, versus Joshi legend Maiko Satomura and the most notorious man in all of Japanese pro wrestling and one of her heroes growing up, the wrestling king himself, Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki at this point forged a reputation Bro, just the haircut alone lets you know he don't play no games. Like, it's, it, it's on sight with him. Even if you're not his enemy, you about to be treated as such, like a mortal enemy, he's gonna beat the crap out of you, male or female. Just a haircut alone lets you know what you're in store for when getting into the ring with this guy. And all over the world and in Japan, as one of the toughest and most badass guys in wrestling. Basically, he's a sick. F Everything yeah. starts off normally as Suzuki and Asuka make their way to the ring. The match begins as normal and everything is standard, but then whenever Asuka and Suzuki Jesus, are wrestling, bro. it's a little bit stiff. Nothing too crazy, but still stiff nonetheless, as he whacks her with a knee to the face and gives her very stiff elbows that rock her. She tries to fight back, but the match for Suzuki, as he is bigger and stronger. Her friends are sold, and Suzuki is straight up manhandling her. But still, it's nothing too out of the ordinary and is often seen in intergender matches to get heat for the man. But then, almost 20 minutes into the match, Jeez. in the end stretch, things start to cross the line. Asuka tries to fight Suzuki once more, and once again, he no-sells it. She eventually starts- Bro, he's literally no-selling anything that she's doing. Like, her attacks are just effectively zero on damage. Get some offense on him, and he seems affected by her moves. This is a big mistake, though, as Suzuki gets up and gives her one of the worst headbutts given from a man to a woman in wrestling. Oh. Suzuki then proceeds to drag her lifeless body around by her hair like she's a ragdoll and proceeds to slap her while he's on top of her. The ref even tries to stop him but he pushes him away with ease and he then grabs her by her hair and strikes her face repeatedly in a brutal manner. Her partner Marafuji even comes in for the save but Suzuki throws him out of the ring swiftly and proceeds to brutally kick and slap Oscar. Bro, these are some stiff shots, bro. This don't... He, he's not pulling back he's like i said i've seen like a clip of this i haven't seen the full thing or knew the context to what was going on but this is taking equal rights equal fights to a, a dangerous level jesus his own tag team partner mako satomura sees what's going on and even steps into the ring to try and stop him but he throws out of the ring swiftly as well and continues to straight up assault oscar this was truly uncomfortable to watch, as you could tell Oscar was out of it. Once again, she tried to fight back, but this was futile. He put her in a leg lock, then chokehold, and then roughly put her into a gotch-style pile driver for the 1-2-3. The ending stretch of this match was one of the most unbearable and agonizing experiences ever. This whole incident was planned though, as it was a work shoot, seeing that Oscar- uh... I mean, even though it's a work shoot, it- it got me. I'm I'm feeling uncomfortable, <laughs> but it's Jesus. The fact that she was cool with catching these type of beats, like these are stiff shots. He's not holding back. He's laying them in. And the fact that she was cool with it to sell this image, whatever she was trying to sell, whatever image they were trying to portray, they portrayed it. <laughs> Jesus. 
Asuka booked this match. Asuka asked Suzuki to go as hard as he Hold could. Hold on. This whole incident was planned though, as it was a work shoot. Seeing that Asuka booked this match. Wow. Asuka asked Suzuki to go as hard as he could with her and not to hold back during this match. Suzuki apparently did not want to be as stiff as he was with Asuka during this match. But Asuka, being the booker of the show and wanting to give the fans a memorable experience, convinced him to go f it as we could see and afterwards he said that he respected her more for taking such a vicious beating from him. Even though this was all planned, it was still definitely too far. This is why intergender wrestling gets such a bad rap. It's yeah. because it can spawn moments like this where yeah. it goes beyond the realms of wrestling and plain and simply just gets too real. Yeah. Japanese wrestling is notoriously stiff, but it should not cross over into intergender matches to this extent. It's not even a thing of projecting western values on Japanese wrestling, but wrong is wrong and this was just plain wrong. After this match, the frequency of Asuka's performances in Japan was low and fans started to speculate her retirement. What fueled this was when she said she will stop accepting bookings in Japan. But then out of nowhere, she appeared mm -hmm. on an NXT takeover show in the crowd and announced that she had signed with WWE. As far as the rest of the story, you already know it as she has become one of the greatest WWE women's wrestlers of all time. For sure. But that is the story of her time in Japan and her incident with Minoru Suzuki. Hey man, this was a very, very dope video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel um this was fantastic you guys go subscribe to age of wrestling as well this was just just wild bro Holy man oscar I, I i think we all can agree we you know just before this incident if you didn't know about it we all can agree that she's she's tough she's a tough sob she can hang with the best of them she ain't afraid of nobody but the fact that she booked this match to catch the severe case of the beats with a man where this nigga got fucking different pathways in his hair and someone that she looked up to, obviously, <laughs> that's wild. But that that's that's her love for wrestling. Now, granted, I, I think it's a little bit too far. This was a little bit uncomfortable to watch. To be honest with you, I'm all down for the equal rights, equal fights, but damn, that was brutal. Holy, man. But comment down below. Let me know, man. How did y'all feel about uh, this whole situation, man? For me, personally, like I said, definitely was a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, it's crazy that she was even willing to do that just to you know show her idol that she's tough but i think that's a little bit too far but y'all let me know uh how y'all felt about that man because for me I, I i once again love me some equal rights equal fights when it makes sense but not to that extreme so but yeah i appreciate all love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still getting to be the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see you next one peace